Hello, everyone. Welcome to my C cell video tutorial. So, C cell is an algorithm for interference of transcriptional and epigenomic cell neural states from single cell genomic data. So, when you perform C cell analysis, it aggregates single cells into matter cells. The matter cells will represent the distinct cell neural state in your data set. So this video tutorial was converted from the C cell online tutorials to show you how we run C cell analysis in real time. If you use the C cell package, it needs acknowledged the authors who created the C cell package and the site layer original publication. So first we can import the packages for C cell analysis. We need the NumPy, Pandas, SCumPy, and the C cell. And also we use Matplotlib and the Cborn to plot images. So let's import the packages. Then we can stop the warnings during our analysis. And we set some parameters for plotting. So now we can load the data. I'm going to use the same data set that uh, the online tutorial used for C cell demonstration. So you can use this link to download the data set. This is a filtered but unnormalized count of single nuclear RNA seq data for CD34 positive sorted bone marrow cells. So I downloaded the data, I used the link already, so we can use the SC read function to load the data. Let's run. Then we can have a look at the data. You can see we have 6,881 cells and 12,434 genes in this data set. We have the observations for the latent cell clusters and also the cell type. And also we have the UMAP information in this data set. So we can use the SCAT plot to look at the cell clusters and the cell types. Let's run the plot. You can see we generated the plot. On the left hand side, we have the latent clusters. 14 cell clusters in this data set. And on the right hand side, we have nine cell types in this data set. So we loaded the data set. Now we can pre process the sequencing data. This step is required for C cell analysis. So before we pre process the data, we want to save the, the raw count data because later we need to use the raw data to summarize the C cell data. So you need to perform this step after the data filterization before you normalize the data. Because this data was filtered already, we can just get the raw count and save it as A data raw. So now we can copy the raw data. So next we can perform the pre-processing. Because this data set was filtered already, we can just normalize the data, perform the logarithm lines, then find the highly variable genes. We can run those steps. So next we can run PCA. Then we can have a look at the A data again. You can see now we add the uh, log 1P data, honey variable genes, and the PCA. We also have the XPCA information in the data. So we perform the pre processing analysis. Now we can start to run the C cell analysis. So the first step. For C cell analysis, is to construct the color matrix. Before we do that, we need to set some parameters. 
for the model analysis. So according to the online tutorial, there are core parameters and the additional parameters for the module. As a general rule, CCL package recommend you use one meta cell for every 75 single cells because this data set has nearly 7,000 single cells. If we divide it by 75, we will get nearly 90 meta cells. So we can set the n meta cells as 90, then we will build the kernels on the XPCA data. We got the XPCA data when we pre-processed the, the data. Now additional parameters, for example, the N waypoint uh, agents. Here, the online tutorial set it as 10. So we can set it as 10 to initialize the meta cells. So now we can set the parameters. Then next, we can set up the module using the parameters we set up here. Let's run. You can see. You got a friendly welcome message to CCL. So we set up the module. Now we can construct the kernel matrix. If we run the construct the kernel matrix function, first we will construct a k nearest neighborhood graph for each single cell. After that, we will use the data from the k nearest neighbor graph to construct a cell-cell similarity matrix. Let's run the construct kernel matrix function. You can see first it uh, computed the KNN graph used the scampi nearest the graph function. Then it used the KNN graph data and build a similarity matrix. So we have the uh, similarity matrix data. Now we can initialize the archetypes for the module. The archetype analysis will decompose the color matrix that we get from above analysis into an archetype matrix. The analysis also linear combinations of cells that are representative for the cell state. So we can initialize the archetype function to perform the analysis. After the analysis, we should have the meta cells. So we can plot the meta cells to make sure they are spread across the final typical space. Let's make the plot. You can see the blue dot represented each meta cells and they are spread in the whole data set. So now we can fit the model. Here we set the minimum iteration as 10 and the maximum iteration as 50. After we fit the model, we can print the number of iterations. Let's fit the model first. You can see the function initialize the, the matrix. Then start the iteration for the first one. It will take some time to finish this step of analysis. Okay, you can see now it finished the iteration number 10. Now we completed the iteration for number 20. And it goes to number 30 now. Okay, you can see we finished the analysis for fitting the module. So in total, you can see because we printed the total iterations, we have 38 iterations for the module. We can check for the module convergence, use the plot convergence function, let's run. 
you can see we generated the plot. The x axis are the iterations, then y axis is the squared error. So you can see this module, even they have different levels. The plot is very similar to the elbow plot in the surat. So you can see it performs to 38 iterations. Because we set the maximum iterations as 50, when we fit the module, then the analysis automatically identifies the best module for your data. In this case, my analysis is 38. If you want to run more iterations, you can force the module to run additional iterations. We can set a additional range as 10 and run it again. After that, we can print the iterations. Let's run it again. Okay, we run 10 more additional iterations. Now you can see the total iterations is 48. We can make the plot again to check the total iterations. Let's run the plot convergence function again. You can see we generated the plot. Now the total iterations is 48. So you don't have to run this step because the package we are automatically to identify the best iteration for your data set, like I showed you here for this data set is 38. So basically we finished the module fitting and the CCL construction. I'm going to stop here in today's video tutorial. In next video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to realize access and the quantify the CCL result. So I hope to see you in my next video tutorial.